to be together. Everyone, every man, woman, and child, rich, poor, Republican, Democrat, black, white, red, yellow, every person, place, and thing deserves to be healed. And when we're not feeling well, we will expend every resource we have to make ourselves feel better. Thousands of dollars on drugs, tens of thousands of dollars on protocols and treatments, hundreds of thousands of dollars on surgeries, and if this hasn't happened to you, you know somebody who has. Two words come to mind, grace and gratitude. Grace to accept the healing and gratitude for the healing, that restoration of wholeness that is coming into our soul, into our mind, into our heart, and into our body. Grace and gratitude have been paired for centuries upon centuries. And when grace and gratitude come together in consciousness, we thrive. We're set up to win. We're set up for a miracle. Grace and gratitude are such amazing words. And when I take them into my own consciousness, the funniest thing happens. I feel like waltzing. <laughs> now, I grew up with rock and roll. <laughs> and I danced through the disco era. And as an adult, I went back to ballet. So when I think about waltzing, it's like, well, if you know that one, two, three, like waltzing is fluid. Waltzing is mindfully orchestrated. Waltzing requires relationships that work. <laughs> and waltzing, I don't know how it makes you feel, but it makes me feel that I recognize my beauty, my health, my wholeness. I recognize that my own radiance when I think about waltzing. So if, if you thought about it that way, you would see for yourself that as we waltz, as you and I waltz, or as you waltz on your own through life, that waltzing is fluid. You're in the flow of life when you're waltzing. And as we waltz, we do have relationships that work. We have that relationship that works with ourselves and we have relationships that work with others. And as we waltz, we actually begin to express and embody our true beauty, our true power, our true wholeness, and that being the radiant light that we were created in the image and likeness to be. It's a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. It's really simple. Gratitude and thriving. Boop. Gratitude and thriving. Boop, because you have to get that six one. Right? <laughs> Christopher's the answer. I'm just like standing here. So, the words grace and gratitude, most English translations of the Bible came initially from the Latin translations. And if we looked at the words grace and gratitude, both of them have that Latin root word gratis, which means pleasing, beloved, agreeable, and favorable. But don't get stuck there because actually the Latin got translated from the Greek. Greek, charis, which means blessing. All of a sudden we're like, yeah, that's the kind of grace and gratitude that I want to experience is the blessing. And that's the word for grace or blessing. The, the word for gratitude actually is Eucharistos. So if you came from a more traditional Christian tradition, you're like, the Eucharist, really? But at the very heart, and I love this nuance about the Greek, the heart of gratitude is grace, right? The 
heart of gratitude is grace. 2023 for Unity of Mesa has been the year of grace. Take a breath into that one because we've been through a few things. Grace. So grace, gratitude, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. There is a story in what Candy Lewis calls one of those foreign books uh, in Christian scriptures in the Gospel of Luke. And in this Gospel, Jesus is traveling to Jerusalem. He's somewhere between Samaria and Galilee, which metaphysically means a lot, but we're not doing metaphysics today. That's a whole different talk. So on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a vi village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, mercy is another name for grace, right? Grace. So here they're asking for grace which is at the heart of gratitude. There are a lot of synonyms in English, which really means words that mean the same thing, that we can use for the word gratitude. The first one is acknowledgement, actively observing and giving credit to someone or something. So when we are practicing the kind of gratitude we call an acknowledgement, it's like we're in a restaurant and we're acknowledging the waiter or the waitress that has been serving us. And we're grateful because they bought us our food <laughs> and they brought us the food that we ordered. And, and it, it's beginning a cycle of acknowledgement because in turn we can say, hey, thank the chef because this was just perfect. And then they thank the chef. And, it's all of these seeds of acknowledgement get planted. And if you start if you start to think, well, you know, thanking my waiter or my waitress is, is like a small seed. It's the same seed of acknowledgement that gets planted when we thank our parents for the lessons that we learned that actually served us. It's thanking our parents and acknowledging them if you were so blessed for them paying for your college education. It's that same seed. A second synonym for gratitude is appreciation. That's the act of reflecting the value or the goodness in someone or something. So my question to you, and if you're online, type it in the chat, but if you're in the room, what is one thing you appreciate about yourself today? <laughs> Your sense of humor, so Kate this precious appreciates her sense of humor. Oh, that was Kate's too. You know, there's plenty to go around, and we can all pick the same thing if we wanted. What's another thing you appreciate about yourself today? Your dress, your health. There's so many things to appreciate, like my hair curled in a direction that looks good today. Right? Um, I appreciate the volunteers. This is for coming today. It's, it's our first day without Nancy Spence as our Sunday coordinator. And so that people showed up. When they agreed to show up, I had considered it a win for Unity of Mesa. <laughs> I appreciate those people for keeping their commitments. So that's something I appreciate about someone else. What do you appreciate about someone else? Uniqueness. Their uniqueness. What's something else? So name a person you appreciate. Oh yeah, the room is definitely because we have so many people. So one, two, three, say your person's name all at once. One, two, three. See, we appreciate people. That's that's part of gratitude. And the third way is praise, which is lifting in consciousness. Now our co-founder Charles Fillmore would say, "What we praise, we raise." So when we praise something, when we bless something, when we appreciate something, when we are grateful for something, we are actually lifting it in our own consciousness. So when we say, I bless you, I bless the goodness of God that moves in through and as you. When I say that, don't miss this, I'm not saying it to make the other person feel better. I'm saying it so that I see them in a new way. So when we say, 
I bless you. We are saying it so that we can see people in a new light, in a new way. Gratitude is amazing. So, here Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, and these ten lepers come and say, Jesus, Jesus, please show mercy on us, which really means give us your grace, give us the grace of healing, give us that grace of something that's going to make our lives better. And Jesus says to them, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they didn't even have to make it to the priest. As they went, they were made clean. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice and prostrating himself at the feet of Jesus. Now, when Bible story scholars go through this story, they're going to say these are the three most important things. Appreciation, praising God, and thanking Jesus. So appreciation for the healing, praising God that it happened, and thanking Jesus. But I think they're missing the most important part of the story. The most important part of the story is the foundation that God set for the success of of the miracle. It's what had to happen in consciousness before they could be healed. Before they could be healed, they had to raise their thoughts. They had to elevate their thinking. They had to take grace and gratitude and combine them with faith. They didn't even have to make it to the priest to have the healing. They first, that's a foundational piece. It's like gratitude is the biggest consciousness shifter there is. When we can find what we're grateful for, then we can shift everything in our lives. These 10 lepers had to find gratitude and put it together with grace before they could be healed. So thank you for sharing, Bible scholars. Listen to this idea of generating that sense of gratitude. Charles Fillmore would say, all healing is based on mental cleansing. When the mind is free from error thoughts, harmony in the body ensues. When we are in a state of grace and gratitude, there is no room for error thinking. When we lift our thoughts, healing begins with the mind. When we lift our thoughts into that gratitude, into that consciousness where grace and gratitude are together, anything can happen. I'm going to tell you a story that's a contemporary one. It is a story about my former minister, Reverend Sky St. John. He was the showman. He was a showman that just to be all other showmen, and he was talented like this from when he was very little. His mother taught him how to play the piano. He loved to play and sing. He, when he was 13 or 14 years old, he entered the church talent show. He played the piano and he sang a song and the congregation loved him. And after the talent show was over, he was kind of hanging out by his dad. And this one congregant comes over and starts talking to his dad. Your son is amazing. Your son can do anything. My gosh, your son can play the piano like nobody's business. You must be so proud of your boy. The words that his father said after that were indelible, became indelible in Sky's heart and mind. His father said, that's not my boy, that's Shirley's boy. Sky carried those words as a wedge between he and his father for over 40 years. When Skye's mom got sick and it was clear that she was going to be making her transition, 
Sky started traveling back and forth so that he could help take care of his mom, which put him in the company of his father. And he realized that he did want to find a way to be at peace, to have a Jerusalem moment with his father. And after meditating and meditating, what came to Sky is that he needed to develop a gratitude list of things that he was grateful to for his dad. So on his next trip, he had a list of 10 things. He got there and he said, Dad, I'd like to take us out to breakfast. And they went to Denny's restaurant. Sky got his list out and put it on the table. And they laughed and they cried and they had a beer. Gratitude has to be felt. Gratitude is selfless. Gratitude cannot be coerced. It's, it's not something that you can fake. It's not like fake your gratitude to make it. <laughs> if you give a 10 year old boy a pair of socks for Christmas, that kid is going to say, thank you. But they're not going to mean it because it's not felt. It's the same thing as when we were little and our teachers and our parents would say, tell someone you're sorry. If you're not sorry, you're not sorry. If you're not grateful, you're not grateful. So you can say, thank you, or I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you're not, you're not. But if you are and you can find it in yourself to be grateful, you're having an entirely different experience of life. When I heard Sky tell me this story, I was so inspired. I was like, I'm going to heal my relationships. I'm going to heal all my relationships. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find relationship support. I'm going to make my relationship. And I felt, well, except for the one that I have with my sister-in-law. <laughs> and then you, you know how in meditation you hear that one. So my sister-in-law at the time, we're now former sisters-in-laws, but she, she hadn't spoken to me for a long time. And the way it happened was when I got married to her brother, when I got married, I had four bridesmaids and they were my four sorority sisters, the people who, you know, and when you're in college, you go through ups and downs and all of life. And they were my four best friends and I had them be my bridesmaids. And I asked Pam, would you please be the guest book attendant? The guest book attendant. And she said, no, thank you. And she did not speak to me for 17 years. Wow. 17 years went by. She spoke to my former husband. She spoke to everybody in the family. She spoke to everybody but me. So here I'm thinking, I have got to find 10 things to be grateful for. And when I reached into my heart and I spent time in meditation, I realized that that woman was good to my children. She never missed a birthday. She never missed Christmas. She showered them with her attention, with gifts, with things they liked. I can't tell you how many fishing poles she bought my son, Mark. I just can't. She loved my children. So now I find myself on a plane going to a family reunion just two weeks after Sky tells this story. And I'm like, okay, it's going to be my sister-in-law. And I have one thing to be grateful for. The way the reunion was organized, she, and we were going to meet up in Kentucky. She was coming from where she lived, and we were coming from North Carolina, where we picked up my older son from school, and we were going to meet at a Dairy Queen. So here I'm coming into a Dairy Queen going, how do you ask somebody who doesn't talk to you to go to breakfast? And then how, if she's not willing to talk to you, do you have the opportunity to share the one day that I feel grateful for. So picture this Dairy Queen 
in Lexington, Kentucky. Two doors, one on that side and one on this side. Pam comes in this door and we come in this door and we meet right in the middle. We meet right in the middle and Pam says, how was your drive? She says, did you have a good flight? How are the boys? Are you excited about Mark going to the Houston Ballet for the summer? I mean, she was a chatty Kathy. A chatty Kathy. So here's what I don't want you to miss. The gratitude, the genuine gratitude that you feel, that I felt, that Sky felt as we went to the place is what lifted our consciousness so the miracle could occur. At the end of this story of the ten lepers, Jesus says, Go and be well. Your faith has made you whole. It is a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. There is a process. We open ourselves up. We find the gratitude that's there. And trust me, even in a relationship where somebody hasn't spoken to you for 17 years, the gratitude is there. And if you are willing to waltz through life with me or with anybody else, I have an affirmation. I use grace and gratitude to heal me from my past. I waltz forward in full faith to thrive in peace. If this is a dance that you are willing to engage in, let's say this affirmation together. I use grace and gratitude to heal me from my past. I waltz forward in full faith to thrive in peace. And I'm happy to waltz with anybody who wants after service. <laughs> We're gonna sing a song, go into meditation, and then as a part of the completion of my 90 day challenge, I will play the Native American flute that I learned for myself, but also for you. There are some hand motions to this song. It's probably easier if you stand, if you want to do the hand motions.
and gratitude by that desire. Breathing into your heart and breathing out through your heart. Knowing that the breath is always evidence of the flow. Knowing that the breath is what invites us to thrive, to heal, to be in our power, to express our true beauty, and to be the radiant light that we are created to be. over us wherever we are 
God is. I am divine. Coming back to this time and this place, coming back to presence, feeling the weight of your body, feeling the comfort of whatever is supporting you, the chair, the floor, the planet, the people, in gratitude for all things working together for our good. We say thank you, God. Thank you, God. And amen.